Hello again, everyone. Cliff Drysdale and Patrick McEnroe at about 2.08 in the afternoon here at Stade Roland Garros in Paris. Not far from downtown Paris, where Sebastian Grosjean and Marit Safin have made their way to courtside and will play for the pleasure of playing. Uh, I guess I'm using that loosely against that tremendous Spaniard whom we just saw take out uh, Andre Agassi. So Juan Carlos Ferreira waiting for the winner of this match. Well, Sebastian Grosjean Cliff has just uh, captivated the crowd here at Roland Garros on his run to this quarterfinal match. He's 24, five foot nine, a small guy, but very explosive. A good record on clay this year at 13 and four. Spends actually uh, most of his time away from the tour in Boca Raton, Florida, has a place there. Here is his run to this quarterfinal. Started off um, difficulty in the opening round against Francisco Clavetti, won that in four. Then he took on James Blake uh, in the second round, the young American who had a pretty good clay court season for his first time on the dirt. Rojan, though, a little more experience. There's a good two-hander. He gets through that one in four sets, seven, five in the fourth. Then the round number three takes on another American, Vince Spadia, who uh, had a resurgence here, coming back and winning a couple matches in a slam for the first time in a while. And this was uh, tougher than a lot of people expected. Spadia playing some good clay court tennis with Grosjean. Again, the guile is a shot maker. He gets through that one. The crowd going wild, 6-4 in the fourth set. Round of 16, much easier against the X-Man from Belgium, Xavier Melis. 6-2 in the first set to Grosjean. A little closer in the second, but look at that flicker. And between the legs, not gonna get it done. 7-5 <laughs> in the second, 6-3 in the third. So Grosjean able to move through comfortably. He needed an easy match in that round of 16, Cliff, because he expended a lot of energy uh, early in the tournament. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, this is going to be a real test. He's going to have to have his running shoes on against the big Russian. Marit Safin, uh, 22 years old. Boy, he's been around a while. He was 20 when he won the U.S. Open against uh, Pete Sampras, that match that we just talked about a few minutes ago. And he does lead the champions race this year after getting to the final in Australia and having after that a consistent year. Now he's in the quarterfinals of the French, just a couple of steps away from his second slam. But he's got still a few hurdles to jump. And this Sebastian Grosjean is one of them. Yeah, and he's had a few hurdles along the way, Cliff, to get here. Uh, and that's a good sign for Zappin, because oftentimes when he does struggle uh, a bit, he gets frustrated and can lose his concentration. Taking on Michael Lodra, talented uh, Frenchman in the opening round. They split the first two sets. And Zappin won. Oh, look at that dropper. What a get there from Zappin. Zappin wins that in four. 6-4 in the fourth. Then he takes on Oliver Rokas, the diminutive. He's real, he's about 5-6, Rokas. And Safin actually was down two sets to one in this, but this diving volley helps him come back and win it in five. Then he takes on David Nalbandian, who's one of those rough Argentinians on the clay. And this, an, another tough match, two sets to one for Safin. Nalbandian had chances to get up in that fourth set. Safin wins it in four. And then the round of 16, lost the first set to the wild card. I know Di Pasquale, and then Safin, good sign for him is he got better as the match went on. Won the second set 6-4, and then started cruising in the last two sets, sets three and four. Again, keeping his composure, uh, showing the emotion, which everybody loves to see from the big Russian, and winning that one in four sets. Composure is an important part of uh, his game, if he can keep his composure, then he's a serious player. Sometimes he loses it, though, but it's happening less and less often. And wins, and he's had plenty of them, sure do help the confidence level. We'll take a break now, and we'll come back to our live coverage of this final men's singles quarterfinal match. We've got one spot left. One of these guys will occupy it. Grosjean and Safin, who is the number two seed here, are in the final stages of their warm-ups. They're just taking their serves. And uh, 
much more. Patrick Saffin obviously knows a lot about playing here on this the surface. Let's tell a little bit about the Saffin story because his parents were players. That's that's no surprise. But as a kid, he moved to Spain. Mm -hmm. We've got three Spanish players already in this in the semi-finals here. But you go down to Barcelona, you get plenty of guys to play against who know how to play on clay. So as big a game as he's got, as big a serve as he's got, clay is his friend too. Well, he's he's got a lot of patience. He you know he can have patience. He hits the ball cleanly off both sides. Uh, he moves well, and that's obviously coming from, from spending all that time in Spain and growing up when he was young, playing on the dirt. This guy, Grosjean, knows quite a bit about playing on the red clay as well. Grosjean talking about uh, playing on what we think is his favorite surface. I feel okay. You know, I grew up on clay in the south of France. But this year I didn't, you know, play a lot on clay because I was injured after Davis Cup. So I didn't prepare really good condition. But, you know, here with the French public, uh, it's always special. So I hope, you know, we're going to play like last year. Yeah, he might play a little better than last year. I mean, yeah, he did well last year. And he uh, wins this match, and it's, uh, he will uh, do exactly what he did last year. But this is Saffin being attended to here now. He's got a... Well, it probably was a little bit of a blister, and there's... Pere Basso is getting a lot of work uh, before the matches. <laughs> Oftentimes the players will have a little something like Ferrero got his finger, his finger taped. And they'll, they'll go out and see how it feels in the warm up and then they'll get the trainer to come out and say, well, you know, I'm not feeling that good. And they probably looked at it in the locker room before the match and decided to give it a shot without anything. But Safin now going to uh, get that taped up. Grosje, as you said, Patrick, is, spends most of his time now, his off time, not that there's a heck of a lot of it in, in South Florida, in Boca Raton. And Marit Safin again now, he's had those years in Spain that we talked about as a kid. So his formative years as a tennis player, and he'll be the first to say, there was really bred in Spain. Now he is back and he's a huge star and celebrity, obviously, having won the US Open back in his home country of Russia. These two battling here for a place in the final four of the pinnacle of clay court tennis, which is Stade Roland Garros in Paris. We've got three semi-finalists already. Albert Costa took out Guillermo Canias. That happened, was that yesterday? A couple of days ago now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Correcha took out Pavel after Pavel became a dad for the second time, drove back to Germany, got back here this morning at 5 a.m. Paris time, and Correcha took him out. Later, uh, the final, it's Juan Carlos Ferreira, the man you've just seen. But later today, semi-final of the women's singles, Capriati and Serena Williams. And then Fernandez and Venus Williams. And those, will, those women's semi-final matches will follow live coverage of the matches you're just about to watch. It's now 2.17 in the afternoon here in Paris. There are some clouds in the sky, but uh, the forecast... A few days ago was for much worse weather than this and it has been fine today so far just five actually very good conditions for tennis a slight breeze but not not to do where they would affect the play i love this the ball kids didn't come out and sit right by the court there they're just so pumped up to Mesdames be out there the court to be on the outer court so they got a little passion. time on their hands safin is one 10 titles in his career, including a few on clay last year in Barcelona and Mallorca. Excuse me, two years ago. No titles for Safin yet this year, though. That's, uh, he's just been consistent. And then I think that's, uh, that's a big step up for Safin to play consistently, but still looking for his first title of the year. Finalist again at Australia and at the Tennis Masters and Series that's event that's in Hamburg. Good crowd a little sparse for this match and there's a there's a good reason for it i know sebastian grosjean is a big deal because he's from france but the french are playing right now as we speak in the world cup competition they lost their first to senegal no score in their second round rock robin match against paraguay 
Uruguay, excuse me. Talking about Fun, that uh, consistency from Murat Safin. Look at that, 19 and three in the last four majors. The only player to reach at least a quarterfinals in all four. Wouldn't have expected that a year ago if you'd asked me that. It also tells you something about his his movement, his versatility. He's a big guy, but uh, he can take the ball early off both sides. He's so powerful. There's, uh, you see, it's not on today, the fan, because it's cool. 40 love. Yeah, Seven is powerful. Yeah, he's he's strong. He's a brute, actually. And he's got the first game here. Join us tonight, 7 p.m. ESPN 2, both women's semi-final matches. Jennifer Capriati trying to repeat as champion here. She takes on Serena Williams and her sister Venus taking on Clarissa Fernandez in the women's second semi-final match. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, we'll have one of the men's semi-final matches as our French Open coverage continues from Paris. So now if... Um Serena beats Capriati today, and then she and her sister will be one and two in the rankings, right, Cliff? Right. And didn't, you say, didn't you predict that three years ago? You said it within a couple years, they'll be one and two, didn't you? I can't believe you were right, huh? Not that you were going out on a huge. No, it wasn't there. that. I mean, any, I thought everybody would have <laughs> figured that out. <laughs> it's, it's surprising me that it's taken so long, and frankly, if they'd played more, I think they'd be there already. Anyway, they're in no hurry, apparently. Grosjean, 15 love. By the way, that uh, promo for tonight, those will be highlights of the matches. You can see them in their entirety here live after this. The women's singles semifinals. Grosjean with that forehand. These two played a marathon of a match Honk back at the U.S. Open a couple years ago. As we look at this replay, and Grosjean, good depth on the backhand, and this is his favorite shot, that inside-out forehand. Oh. This is a match that's going to be dictated by the big Russian. Head to head, 3 2 overall. Safin winning those three matches in 2000, one of which was a tie break in the fifth set in the third round of the U.S. Open. Only played once on clay. That was last year at the World Team Cup in Dusseldorf, Germany. wins the game it's one apiece this is a best of five set men's quarterfinal to see who takes on Juan Carlos Ferrero of Spain I'm not so sure I agree with you on that cliff that is Safin is dictating I mean this guy Grosjean he can hit a lot of winners with that forehand and that's going to be a big factor in this match I mean sure Safin's got a bigger serve 
But Grosjean, you know, it's hard to just dictate play against Grosjean completely because he's explosive. And he's smart. Well played from Safin. Well, Safin knows that Grosjean is looking to run around and hit as many forehands as possible. So even early on, he's looked to go to the forehand side of Grosjean to keep him honest early. Oh! That drop shot is uh, part of that strategy as well. You know, I went for Grosjean in this match just to be contrarian with you, Patrick, and um, we'll find out, but I have a... F Why can't you, know? you just say you, you agree? Well, what's, so, what's so horrible about saying, you know, Patrick, you're right. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, I there's think. No, no fun in that. 30 to Safin. But yeah, I also feel something. like Safin, if he, you know, he can self-destruct. We'll see if the, in front of this French crowd... And if Grosjean can, uh, he's got to wait to the. He's got to. Uh, Grosjean wait for the World, World Cup. Cup match to be over. <laughs> Get the crowd into it. The whole country holding their breath for that soccer match. Marit Safin holds on. It's two games to one. We're on serve in the first set. Quarterfinal men's singles live from Chatrier. One sales and Grosjean yeah, has won the first point of this uh, fourth game to one Safin. Live here on Chatrier. Lift Drysdale, Patrick McEnroe. Agassi going down in four sets, enthralling sets to one Carlos Ferreira earlier. Andre has joined us now to talk after the loss for which we think it's deuce in this game at uh, Philippe Chatrier. You're watching Marit Safin and Sebastian Grosjean. There's some question about a call. They indicated that it was good. So this point looks like it will go to no indication yet. I'll tell you as soon as I see the scoreboard. Still no indication. Well, game point, I think, for uh, Grosjean. The right, Grosjean. He was up right. 40 love in this game. Back to Deuce. Now his ad. <laughs> Certainly nice of uh, Agassi to join us in two all now in this first set, but you, you got a little hint of what it takes for Agassi to do well on clay. You hear him say, I got to clean up some of the things in my game. You see, that's the difference. The difference is for a guy like uh, Ferrero, he, you know, he's playing the game that he's used to, that he's styled his whole uh, game on, whereas Agassi has to all of a sudden do things differently. And that just this gives you an insight into the different approach it takes for an American, especially a hardcore player like Agassi, to adjust his game, to do some things he's not used to doing, not really even comfortable doing. You know, playing more defensive, sometimes you know, playing that drop shot, as he said. Uh, now he must get back to hitting through the ball more. Yeah, that was interesting. I mean, he's so, it, what he's saying is basically he's got a clay court game and a hard court game. And uh, certainly you've got to take much quicker swings on the grass. Love 15. Very smooth, Safin. The first serve 
Grosjean gets it back low. Safin moves in. Love the way he takes that ball early. Look at that perfect technique, this guy, on pretty much every swing. He's improved the volley. Still can be a little shaky uh, with his wrist on the volley and getting down to the ball. But uh, that's been an improvement in his game. Oh, yes. The abductor of the left thigh has been giving Sebastian Grosjean some some problem injured slightly is Yuri Novak when they played against the Czech Republic in Davis Cup. Contact. I mean, his serve is big enough to get him free points on this mm -hmm. on this slow surface. It is huge, and without too much effort either. He's tall. He's got great upper body rotation. Very simple swing. Oh yeah, smooth is the big fella. Has a sister who plays on the WTA tour as well, Marit Safin, in front 3 2 first set. 15 love in this game, 2 3, Grosjean serving. First set. Oh, yes. Grosjean really knows how to open the court up. Watch the angle on this one. Oh, on Inside the service box, he sneaks in, quick as can be, and goes behind Safin. Kelly okay, moves away from the ball, gives himself enough room to make that volley. Pressure on the second serve from Safin. That's a good play. Agassi tried to put pressure on Ferrero, but just, just yep. came short. When Ferrero had a bigger, has a little bigger second serve. And, and what also helps Safin, one of the reasons he's so tough on clay as well, Cliff, because he's so tall and he's got that two handed back. And so that kick serve from a lot of these dirt ballers doesn't really doesn't bother, bother him. him. Yeah. Great shot there from Grosjean. Flattens out the backhand. Watch Safin, he's looking for the one cross court. That's the safe play. Leans on it. It's behind Safin again. Obviously, that's going to be a tactic from Grosjean to go behind Safin, who moves well once he gets going in one direction. But being 6-3, it's much tougher to change direction. Game point to the Frenchman Grosjean. Actually, they have him listed as 6-4 in my uh, little guide here for Safin. He's a sweet hitter of the ball, isn't he? Yeah, he's tall. We he talked about that, and he's strong. But uh, I feel he comes off the racket very cleanly, Safin. He's got that ease of movement, lackadaisical almost.
That's a very good play from Grosjean, baby. He comes up with a drop shot, and then Grosjean, not content with just dropping it back, comes under it with spin. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah, look at how much spin he puts on it. Watch it kick to the left there. Yeah, that's not this kind of game that Safin wants to get into with Grosjean. Look at this. That is beautiful stuff. <laughs> Genius. 3-3, three, three, first set. Zero <laughs> cats. Settle in. It's going to be a while. We're live here. This is the first set, best of five. Quarterfinal men's singles. Cliff Drysdale, Patrick McEnroe. It's Marit Safin and Sebastian Grosjean. Winner to take on Juan Carlos Ferrero. Oh! He just took out Andre Agassi. Thirty fifteen. It's very smooth. Look, it's a, I suppose it's a dangerous play, this guns. drop shot, but if you're out of court, you've got your man that far back, as you see Grosjean is here, makes the return. Look where he is. So, San Francisco, here it goes. Run for it. You hit it too long, and obviously you're in trouble. He got there, but not in enough time to do anything with it. 30, 40, 15. And... Marit Safin holds on. It's on serve 3 4. First set. Welcome back to the last of the men's quarterfinals. Safin up 4 3 on serve. No break point chances yet in this match. Agassi going down in four sets to Ferrero. Karecha getting through his quarterfinal finally after a couple of days with Andre Pavel. He's into the semis. He'll take on Albert Costa. Three Spaniards in the semis this for the last spot. Zero counts. Solid return from Safin sets up the short backhand. Clean winner up the line. Love 15. Oh. Relatively, at least in some of the expensive seats, sparse crowd because as we speak, and in fact it's over on ESPN2 right now, is France's World Cup match with Uruguay. Of course, France losing in the opening, their opening game to Senegal. Big upset. Good. Ripper pass there from Safin. With the whole country tuned in to see that game. You've got to win that game, France, to have a chance to qualify for round two. 3 4, 15 30. Remember the women's semifinals coming up right after this match live. Jennifer Capriati against Serena Williams, and then Venus taking on Clarissa Fernandez from Argentina. Safin again yeah, going after that second serve of Grosjean, so the first opportunities to break now. Go to Marat Safin, number two seed here.
Honda Academy. Still break point. The tall one's there for that. There's the first break of the match. Seven Rojan scrambling, trying to get this one over the head of Safin, but pretty comfortably handled there. Four points away from the first set for Safin now with a 5-3 lead. I mean, Grosjean better hope that uh, France wins that soccer game, too, <laughs> because you know, all the people will come in here, they'll fill it up, but they'll be so depressed. Ah, oh, Safin finding the groove. Yeah, it's it's a, there's a pretty good yeah. crowd here, in spite of the fact that France is in the middle of the World Cup effort now. Safin... Uh, this has so much natural power in his swings and his strokes. Seems like he's uh, learning to temper it. Cut. 124 mile now, sir. And it's effortless, that serve, isn't it? 30 love now. That ball just catching the back of the line. Oh, Set points for Safin coming up. You still disagreeing with me about who's dictating play here? Uh, Safin's doing a little more dictating now. At that point, he didn't. 40 15. Yeah, on counts. Set point seven. Seven has won the first set. One break. Six three. Rajon the seven. We come back. After triumph, the Notre Dame, the Louvre, and that one there. That's the most famous of them all. La Tour Eiffel, Eiffel Tower here in Paris. Looks like Sebastian Grosjean mentioned that he'd been having a problem, a minor physical problem that he injured during a Davis Cup match. And he is being looked at. Marit Safin winning the first set 6-3 over France's favorite tennis son, Sebastian Grosjean. Andre Agassi going out earlier. Quarterfinal of the men's singles. Juan Carlos Ferreira beat him 6-3, 5-7, 7-5, and then 6-3. Costa and Correcha are already in the semi-finals joining Ferreira. So we have three Spaniards in the semis. Merit Safin's winners in that first set from our shot spot. 
So he can hurt you off uh, both sides, forehand oh, and backhand. There was the trainer seeing uh, Sebastian Grosjean, Per Bastel. That's two, Thomas Johansson in the championship match in Melbourne. For that record, yeah, that was uh, the only one he's lost. 41 and one, that's front running, I'd say. Rojan with the good serve out wide, sneaks in. Just a swinging forehand volley. S'il vous plaît. Forty level Grosjean first game, second set. Safin playing as we've mentioned a few times the final of the Australian. Hasn't been a great clay court year for him. He got to the final tennis masters Hamburg. Federer just romped over him in straight sets there. Lost to Malice in Rome and to Carlos Moya, quarters in Monte Carlo. Forty fifteen. Ah, oh, beautifully done. Safin is so strong that even from behind the baseline there. He even take a big cut at it and just flicks it cross court. Just the preparation. The two hands are there. He stays down, leans into it. Great balance. Still game point. Bonjour. The Frenchman wins the first game of the second, but Marat Safin from Russia oh, won the first yeah. set. This is live. Best of five set men's quarterfinals. Sergio Garcia tied the tournament record last year. Two-time winners Vijay Singh and Ernie Els are challenging Garcia this year at the Buick Classic Championship that begins on ESPN today at 2 Eastern. Coverage continuing Friday at 4 and ABC takes over this weekend. But you're invited to log on to ESPN.com for more on the Buick Classic on the PGA Tour. Sergio Garcia. We've got three Spanish in the semi final of the French already. <laughs> How'd they do yeah, in their so first so World Cup? They, they won their first game, which uh, they've been underachieving in World Cup. Ole. So uh, they're looking to make some noise there in Group B. Take on your old. Uh, country cliff I think next South Africa okay Grosjean trying to mix it up now early in this second set throwing a lot more slices in on the backhand I'm gonna keep it low he can't out hit Safin no score in that French Uruguay soccer game going on the World Cup. That's over on ESPN two right now. Yeah, it looks like Grosjean maybe 
Just struggling a little bit with that thigh that's been bugging him. Didn't look that balanced on that move. Had the trainer see him on the last changeover. It has been a, a, a problem for him for really the last couple months. You're watching live coverage from Chatrier, Stade Roland Garros. This is the 2002 French Open men's singles quarterfinals. Cliff Drysdale, Patrick McEnroe here. You're watching Marat Safin and Sebastian Grosjean. 40-15 in this game. First set to Safin. Andre Agassi going down earlier today. Juan Carlos Ferrero is in the semifinals, joining two other Spaniards. Ferrero waiting for the winner of this match. Best of five sets. First set over to Safin. Game point here, Safin. Grosjean one game in the second. The other two Spaniards, Al Costa in his first career slam semifinal, taking, two time, taking on two-time finalist Alex Corecha. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grosjean, uh, yeah, maybe having a problem with, you know, physically uh, a little bit, but he's got through so far pretty well, moving okay. His other problem is just the, the heaviness yes. of shot of Safran. Yeah. Best ATP ranks for French players, Noah number four and five, Grosjean number six last year with that great run at the end of the year, Lacan. Oh! Back in 86, he made the final here, losing to V-Lander. One game all, second set. John has been moving up pretty quickly the last few years. Steadily, can he go any higher than a number six finish? I'd be surprised if he gets ahead of, uh, gets above that. Doesn't have that big, huge weapon. Has to work pretty hard to win uh, his matches day in and day out. That makes it, that makes it tougher. And, today's game to stay up there. Grosjean is calling for something. I'm not sure what this is. He looked at the chair ramp and uh, what is this, a ball? Maybe they lost a ball somewhere. He just mm -hmm. brought a new ball out from... Looks like a new ball. I quite get that. 30 love, Grosjean. Marit Safin again saying that he played because of his parents. His mom was a tennis player. Now uh, is her sister or his sister's coach, who, as I told you, is on, is on the WTA tour now. He says he's looking forward to her getting better so they can play some mix together. Game point. long 
And remember, it was seven about, f it was four years ago, I think, he beat Andre Agassi here and made the huge splash on the first, I think it was the first mm -hmm. day of the tournament, actually. Mm -hmm. First round, anyway. Consistency from Safin is uh, wearing Grosjean down a bit. Here's the thing about Safin too, Cliff, is that we talked about him reaching at least a quarters or better in each of the last four majors. He doesn't really have to change that much in his game. I mean, you heard Agassi talking about having him change his swing. I mean, Safin would pretty much play the same type of tennis. I mean, he's powerful enough. Yeah. Big backhand there. He's got uh, the big serve. Seven. You know, he does it, he, he plays offensive tennis on clay. I agree, I think that's a, a good point and it's quite right. I mean, he just keeps powering the ball. Much you can do. Grosjean really feeling the heat now. Safin, four straight points in this game, giving himself break point. That was a good hustle, actually, because he slipped up and yeah. still nearly got to it. And I'll tell you what, Grosjean went for a big second serve he there. And that helped right here. It surprised Safin. And he did catch a break with a little stumble there from Safin. Good effort, as you said, Cliff. Deuce. there from Safin to no avail and a nice approach there from Grosjean. Uh, Safin knew where it was going remember they've played five times knows that Grosjean likes that inside out forehand this was the one that set it up that flick that big backhand up the line another game point for Grosjean that goes long oh no Dropped in. Wow. Looked like it was going way long. Grosjean thought so as well. Dropped in. Deuce. Safin is famous for breaking rackets. Contest between he and someone else, even Isovich, maybe, if we see if he could break the most rackets in there. They say that if you have any special rituals, anything like that, he said, No, I just break rackets, Safin. Again, break point for Safin. Firepower there in this Russians game, a lot. Oh. More of it, and Safin gets the break. First break of the second. He's won the first set behind one break, six three. He's got two one now in the second. This is live. And from Chatrier in Paris. Maris Safin about to serve with a break in the second. He won the first set 6 threes. Mother, as I mentioned, a tennis. Actually, she played uh, Wimbledon Junior events, Rausa. And his dad, Mikhail, was Moscow's champion in track and field, 100 meters. Yeah. Yeah, he's got some. Uh, that explains why he's just a physical specimen. <laughs> 
I mean, he's intimidating when you see him. I mean, uh, he is just built. He's thick, very tall. He's just uh, built like a rock. Mentally, he's right there now, Cliff, and he's just, yeah. I mean, Grosjean, there's no answer now from Grosjean. And if Safin keeps playing like this, there, there isn't one. And I also think that Grosjean which is maybe slightly feeling that the effects in his leg just doesn't feel he has a confidence to run well. Just too much, just too much firepower. I mean, it's so easy for Safin. Safin, as I mentioned, spent a lot of time in Spain. Of course, you don't have to spend time in Spain to like soccer, but he says that soccer is another of his passions. But he says, he says anyway, he doesn't move that well as a soccer player. He likes ice hockey a lot. What does he say about any special habits or uh, before, during, or after a match, Cliff? I told you that already. What he likes to break records. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 40 15. You don't listen to everything I say, do you? I usually do. I just wanted you to reiterate. You know, there's a few things I want you to reiterate for us, for the audience. Because you accuse me sometimes of not listening well, to you. Well, you don't. I mean, that's, that's clear. Oh! Just because I repeat what you say sometimes, <laughs> just I think it's important, you know, so I'm going to put emphasis on it. Seven holds on, and he's got the lead 3 1 now, and one set under his belt. Well, Grosjean must feel like the uh, French soccer team, they've been, you know, they've been playing a man short most of that game, Cliff. They got one of their players sent off with a red card. Like he's playing against two guys right now, Grosjean. Cannot find a weakness at this point in the Safin game. Yeah, that's a good play there from the Frenchman. Very good. Seven got to that one. You know, he says he doesn't move that well. And we've talked about, you know, how big a guy he is. But just look how he gets to this one. He's there in time. Yeah, it was just a wrong selection. But Safin was there in plenty of time. You got to go up the line with that one. If you're Safin, let me just... Jean is looking for answers. Safin just pasting the ball in the return. Another one on the line. This is, this is similar to what he did to Sampras at the Open in 2000. Just hitting clean winners on the return. That was in the final. He won that, that U.S. Open. I wonder what he would say if you asked him what his best surface, okay. surface is. Hmm. At this point, he might say one with lines. <laughs> Fifteen forty on Grosjean. Two break points for the Russian. Won the first set and he's already up a break in the second. We've seen a lot of tight matches, Cliff, and uh, we might we might finally have a blowout on our hands.
Well, this is rare. Count. Safin miss hitting the return, and that enabled Grosjean to hit the forehand winner. He hasn't seen enough of these balls today, though. and we are even here deuce this game a lot of 50 yeah. returns so far cliff saffin's only missed seven and he, it's not like he's just making them he's hitting them back with some authority is there from Grosjean up to the point as well. Yeah, this was beautifully done. He stops, sets himself. He knows what he's going to do already. And a lot of underspin on that ball just dies. Game point. with how Saffron's improved that, that transition game and that ability to knock the volley off. Would those shots, though, have the same impact on the Mosquito um, uh, in the next round? It's not there yet. The winner plays the Mosquito, but would they? I'm waiting till we get there, Cliff. Deuce. That is very athletic from Safran. High backhand, and he was in the air when he hit it. That is a tough shot. And then the attempted lob long. This is another break point. Since the start of the tournament, Grosjean hasn't touched a racket. He, between matches, he's been riding a bike and, and, doing, and having massages because of that injury we told you about, the left thigh abductor. Safin gets another break. He's got two breaks now in the second for one player will change ends. He'll take a break. We will two first set to Safin. Years ago, Marat Safin reached this juncture at this tournament, took in, taking on Magnus Norman in that quarterfinal. And four set, 6 5, Norman. Safin misses with the forehand. The racket goes down, and Norman. Of course, went on to reach the final that year, losing to Gustavo Kirten. Looks like he might take it one step further this year, though, on Port Philippe Chatere. We're live. Rat Safin up a set and 4 1, two breaks in the second set, serving 15 love. He's been consistent in the slams. He's proved he can play on any surface. He's won at the U.S. Open back in 2000. Wimbledon quarterfinalists last year, U.S. Open lost to Sampras in the semis last year and losing to Johansson in the finals this year, down under. Yeah, on does it. Well, this is a walk in the park so far. Incredibly, that's only the first ace for Safin, but he's won a lot of freebies with that first serve. He's won 90% of the points when he's gotten that big first delivery in. Oh, that is just uh, it's target practice, Cliff. Yeah, man. And he's got a 5-1 lead now. And the problem is that Grosjean is not really showing Safin that he's A, willing, B, able, or C, both 
to uh, run down run down balls. Well, if Saffron's got this much game going from there's not a heck of a lot, even if you are speedy, that you can That's do true. about it. Five one Saffron in the set. John gets one by him. 30 love. And when he's committed to run balls down like this, that also sends a message to his opponents that, uh, you know, where his, his, his mental attitude is. Another big return from Safin, just muscling the ball. Hold the guns. Pushing Grosjean back immediately with the return. Look at this one. Back deep, Grosjean just fights it off, and then this is a duck. A 24 unforced errors, 38 oh. in favor of Safin. Yeah, so much weight of shot, as you were talking about earlier, though, Cliff, from Safin. That's what's forcing the errors. Point for Grosjean. Still, this is good hustle from Sap. Well, yeah, you can clap when you're up 6 1. <laughs> no, 6 3 5 1. Oh! I'm not saying that he wouldn't if he was down that score of cliff, but it's just a little easier. on the line. I think it's safe to say that he wouldn't if he was done. He would get in a pretty ordinary mood, but he's in an extremely good mood today in Paris on what turned out to be a very good day for tennis. Five to seven. We're live here on Chatrier. This is Stade Roland Garros in Paris, and we warmly welcome you back, everyone. Marit Safin leading 5-2-2 two, two breaks. He's been attended to. Let's tell you what happened earlier today. We were we started at 5 a.m. Eastern time with Alex Karecha taking out Pavel, the Romanian. Andre Pavel, he beat him 7-6, seven, 7-5. Seven, he was up uh, two sets anyway in that match, and he just closed it out. Then Ferrero, Juan Carlos Ferrero, took out Andre Agassi. After Agassi made a comeback in the second set, and, and nearly made a comeback in the third. He was down 5-2 in the third set. He comes back, had chances for 6-5, then to serve for the set, but he failed. And so in the third set, Ferrero beat him, six, in the fourth set, rather, 6-3. So Ferrero's through. It's the Spanish Open right now, Cliff. Costa, Corecha in one semi. Ferrero, the other Spaniard, waiting for the winner of this match, which Safin so far has been dominating. Per Bastolt, who's the tour trainer, has been... Uh, I mean, a lot of work out there as the crowd will start really filing in now that France just tied Uruguay 0-0. But he's talking to Grosjean now. He retapes something for Safin. I think Grosjean is sort of asking him what he thinks about the leg. Should he keep playing, maybe? He's clearly not moving as well as he can. Grosjean took out Malice in uh, an excellent effort. And before that, he beat... Vince Spadia, that was a tough match though for him. And nevertheless, he held on. 
Women's single semi-finals coming your way. Caprieri against Serena. That's what you need to know. Serena Williams and Fernandez against Venus Williams. Those matches to follow. Serena Williams leading uh, that matchup between the two, between her and Jennifer. Why not Jennifer? If it's Caprieri, would you say Jennifer? Just say Jennifer, yeah. J-Cap. Like Pima. Right. Well, a little bit better ground strokes. 5-2, <laughs> Safin. You picking uh, Serena in that one, Cliff? Yes. Four. See, I'm not going to say That's I'm going to pick Jennifer just to go against you. I I agree. See, well, I'm man enough to say that I agree. I'm picking. You know, I'll let you pick first, so and what, then I'll pick Serena as well. So, what do you want to, some prize for that or something? I mean, that's okay. Can I change my mind about my pick here now, or do I got to stick with it? Well, you, you, you already said you yeah, really felt Safin was going to win this, and that's one of the reasons why. Look what he's done on his serve. 18 to 20. You knew, you know he's going to win a lot of points on his first serve, but on the second, 15 oh. to 20. That's impressive. Who are you picking in the Venus uh, Venus man? <laughs> <laughs> Clarissa Fernandez. You know, I'm going to pick Clarissa Cliff just to be different, <laughs> to win four games. <laughs> Five, two, and fifteen thirty now. Saffin. Grosjean trying something different in this game. He's standing further back, just trying to loop the ball. But that doesn't bother Safin too much. He leans on the backhand and has the easy volley. This is the one that doesn't give him trouble because he's so tall. And with the two-hander, that the high bouncing ball is an easy one for the Russian. For a two sets to love lead. Ace for Safin. Pretty much says it precisely, doesn't it? As Safin runs away with the set in two breaks. First set, one break, three and two for the Russian. Kevich here from Chatrier in Paris. And a welcome back to you, Cliff Dreiser, Patrick McInerney alongside you watching Grosjean Safin. Safin easily winning the first two sets, 6-3, six, 6-2. Six, this is a men's singles quarterfinal round. Man, look, the, the truth is, it would be great if it was a Sampras, Agassi, Roddick semi-final lineup. But it isn't. It's uh, three Spanish players so far. And uh, frankly, the ratings for yeah, the right. rest of the week because of that are not going to be the greatest. And that's in, in a certain way a pity. I will nevertheless say to you that this match, this next match between the Mosquito Ferrero. And oh. as it looks to oh, be Marit Safin is going to be something that you should not miss. Andy Roddick going out to... He was the number 13 seed, by the way, going out to Wayne Arthur. Sampras going out to Gardenzi, both of them in the first round. You know what happened to Agassi if you've been with us. He lost earlier to the Mosquito Ferreira in the quarters. Now the place is jammed after the French. I guess disappointment, you'd have to yeah, say. They, they really yeah. needed to win that game in the soccer. They haven't scored a goal yet. 0-0 zero, zero draw against Uruguay. It's 
They'll have a shot, I think, to qualify if they win their next match, their next game. First of the third goes to Sebastian Grosjean, the Frenchman. He leads by one game to love, but he's down two sets to none. Coming up here, Capriati and Serena and Fernandez and Venus Williams. But to uh, catch up on all of today's action here at Roland Garros and tune in again, ESPN 2, tonight at 7 Eastern. We'll show you match of the day and a lot more. And as you can tell, there is a lot happening. We'll be back here on ESPN tomorrow at 1 Eastern. It's 10 out west men's semi-final action and please log on ESPN.com he would French open Venus Serena and Jennifer will be the new rankings on Monday if Serena wins today You know, Patrick, I just have one other thing, because you asked me earlier who was going to win that Serena yeah. uh, match with Jennifer, and I'm, I'm going with Serena because I've watched him play in the finals in Rome as you watch this again, but, but I will say that Jennifer is saying that when it comes to the slams, mm -hmm. she puts a little bit extra into it, and so she's, she's confident. Yeah, she certainly has proven that she knows how to play well when the most pressure is on. Oh, I mean, that comeback against Hingis in the Australian Open final was... A remarkable turnaround. It's going to be a slugfest. Got two of the three best players in the world going out in the semis of a major. So what else could you want? Good Safford, just Mr. Feel out there. Rojan trying to make him work, dink the ball down low, and Safin doing everything right so far. He's not had any trouble at all on his serve. Williams Caprietti match in Rome was a semi final, by the way. Game point 7 5 in the third for uh, Serena. Swats it away like it's just a pesky. Oh, no, he's flying I mean, insect. It's cruise control right now. Mursaf and just flowing. Big first serve is there. Look how he keeps his eyes on the ball and the head up through the contact. Watch this great motion. Look at the head. Stays up through contact. One all, third set. Yeah, Grosjean's trying to take that backhand early up the line because once he gets into a rally, Safin just has, has too much firepower. But uh, that's high risk clay court tennis, and it's not paying off. See how much pressure he puts on the second serve uh, there of Grosjean as well. And I mean, Grosjean, he can feel it. Safin just standing there waiting for it and in, like uh, enjoying a little dessert. Love 30. 30. I've got an echo in here. Echo, echo.
Uh, oh. just, he's just playing such a balanced match, Safin. He's not overhitting. He knows he's overpowering Grosjean, so he's not just trying to hit winners. And this is a one-sided affair right now. Yep. Je Safin. And really, Safin has taken the crowd out of this also, because I don't think that they, these 14,000 here, see any hope for their number one French men. Yes. Safin serving 15 love this game, 2-1, and in games, two sets to none. Pam Shriver, Mary Jo Fernandez, chomping at the bit. I would be showing up here for the next match. I would be too for C Capriati and Serena. Capriati or Serena, Mary Jo. Close, Serena. Pam? She's Just to disagree. You. This is what Cliff, don't do what Cliff does, Pam. That's what Cliff does. Oh. Uh, that match following this live here, Chatrier court. Stad Roland Garros after this is over and it looks like Safin is walking away with it. Well, he is at this point. 40 love Safin. Oh. You can sometimes see a silver lining for the underdog, but not, not today. You know, Safin has done Safin. it from every part of the court. On return serves, even at the Safin net, he's been very zone. impressive. The winners off the ground have come from both wings. And uh, this is a controlled, tempered Murat Safin, and that's a very dangerous player. <laughs> yeah, like a quiet, ruthless killer. Um, by the way, don't forget, remember that late night match that I don't know Clement was on? He was going down in flames too, about 8 o'clock at night, and mm -hmm. came back in a huge way against Kareche. Had match points on him actually. Look, Cliff, you don't have to come up with reasons to try to get our audience to stay. I mean, they're waiting for the women's semi. They're, you don't need to, you know, Honda suggest zero. that Grosjean could actually come back and win this, do you? I do not think Grosjean is going to win this match. Long. Not that easy to get over Safin's head because he is six foot four. Tremendous reach, big wingspan. And he's more comfortable and confident at the net recently, so that also has an effect because if you think the guy's going to miss a volley, you just try to play the pass. And when you know your opponent is, is volleying comfortably, is confident, has that wingspan, you don't have feel like you have as many options. You know, we talk about a lot of the things that a player like Safin has, but it's if he doesn't have the meat and potatoes, which in this case on this court are ground strokes mm -hmm. off both sides, and he's nothing, but he has those. I just watch him, as you said earlier, how many he's made just a, have such a high percentage of returns like that. A lot of pressure from yeah, Safin. But he's down to break and he's down two sets to Manit Safin, US Open champ of a couple of years ago. Safin, 
First point is Safin at 3 2 15. Love Safin, two sets to Safin against Sebastian Groschon. Quarterfinal men's singles. This is live on Chatrier Court. And boy, it has turned into a terrific day for tennis. The sun is out. Rain virtually all of yesterday. That's the first double fault in the match for Safin. Fifteen all. for Grosjean. Safin and measured that backhand up the line. Watch this. Grosjean wasn't even going to move for it. Hits the tape. Second chance and takes advantage of it. A little opening here. Maybe Grosjean can get this crowd into it. It's filled up now since that uh, soccer game's over. time to make him play few chances that Grosjean has seen if it is in front on Saf and serve unforced error on that one and the first sign of well, indecision there from Safin. His first break Honda point down. here against his serve. First one of the day. That'll get him going. Merci. Bonjour, Jean Frey. S'il vous plaît. That is just too good. And that is solid. Great point, Patrick. He's got him back, yeah. and he just... <laughs> well, sir, moving backwards, too. Great court sense from Safin. Also knows, I think, that Grosjean is, is struggling a bit physically. Back to Deuce. Lavatage for Safin. Quiets the crowd down. Game point seven. Deuce. Only one break point against seven in, in the day. That's that's really amazing on a slow court. It's testimony to terrific, terrific serving ability today. You know, it's a really big deal. How about that? It's a second. really big deal when you can serve as well as, I mean, he's got a huge serve. That was 201 Ks. That's 100 and, uh, 125 miles an hour on a clay court. I don't care what kind of surface you're on. If you can hit them that hard, that well, tough to return. Game point. End of last year, Sebastian Groschow had to win the Paris Indoor, and he did in order to qualify for the year-ending championship in Sydney. 
And Sebastian Grosjean stood opposite Leighton Hewitt for the championship there. <laughs> Crowd are trying to get excited by this. Fifteen left, Grosjean. Oh, that's good. Just hasn't been able to get in control of points consistently, though, Grosjean. This time it works, but Safin has been deadly on that return on the second serve. Oh. 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 Are you up against somebody who's got so much uh, strength of shot, depth of shot. Uh, Safin, you try for too much sometimes. You know, you were saying all, all along earlier, Patrick, when we were watching Agassi, that what he had to do to win was be more aggressive, try to get in, change things up. And Grosjean really doesn't have the facility to do that against Safin. He should probably be trying to do the same thing. But he doesn't have the same game. 30 all. It's not, not, just not an option for him. and trying to drop her again, but Rick's this one, and Grosjean has plenty of time. Waits for Safin to move. Trying to hold on, at least keep it semi-interesting in this third set. Yeah, there again, attacking that second. Pretty nice story, the Safin one, really, because he's just a kid, and there's basically, he just can't pursue his tennis career in Moscow at that time in their political history. Because the Soviet Union was Stop. basically gone and the new Russian government wasn't putting money into sport, didn't have it. I mean, the country was in a, in a mess. So he left to go to Spain, got a sponsor. And that's where his formative years as a tennis player took place. Great point. But the power is just not really there in his legs to run. He so says, well, I might as well chip and come in. Maybe something good will happen. for the dropper he just well to just bunt this one back Grosjean just puts it right back to him yeah, you got it. 
Yes, Safran, on those years in Russia, he said it was difficult to get tennis balls and rackets, so people left. Everybody left the country, so I couldn't practice with anybody, so I had to leave, and he did. Now he says it's changed, obviously. In fact, Russia has become a, I mean, a breeding ground for some outstanding players these days. Particularly female players. Exactly. Lots of young Russian players coming up. All Safin all day long. In Great this point. Safin has quieted this French crowd. He's playing the French number one for a He leads 5-2, serving for the match. Thanks for the uh, update, uh, uh, <laughs> Michael. The, uh, obviously, the French are just You're distraught. distraught. Right <laughs> Losing the first one and then tying today. But they're jammed now into this uh, chatrier. I'm also not exactly ecstatic that Grosjean is just moments away from an exit here of this year's French. Grosjean was in the semi-final here last year, losing to Kodetja. Safin looking for his first appearance in this slam semi. 30 love, two points away. Be pretty impressive when you consider that Safin will have made the semis or better in every major except Wimbledon. He made the quarters there last year. Plays yeah, like this, I wouldn't have bet against him making the semis there. Mm -hmm. Match points for Safin. Safin, the only player in the semis here out of the four. First of all, that's not Spanish, but more importantly, the only guy that's won a major U.S. Open champ uh, left in this field of four at Roland Garros. Too much firepower. Give us a preview of this Ferrero semifinal wow. with Safin. You know, I, I thought Ferrero, I still think Ferrero is a slight favorite, but Safin was impressive today. And he has enough power and a big enough serve to really worry Ferreira. Carecha, they've played 12 times. I like uh, Carecha in that one over Costa. Jennifer Capriati, Serena Williams, live coverage of that first women's semi final coming your way here from Lord Chatrier. French Championships semi final women's singles coming up when we come back.